Hello, everyone. Welcome to Walmart podcast of the Athletic School. Uh, today, our guest speaker uh, is Holly Brandenburg, um, and we're going to be talking about aromatherapy. She's a registered nurse and certified aromatherapist. Uh, she's also the founder of the Science of Essentials, an online resource that provides education regarding aromatherapy. So, Holly, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad we, we made it after yes. so long. Uh, I am so thrilled to be here. I'm so excited about this topic too. This is such a fun topic just to tie in with aromatherapy. Yeah. So, I mean, like I, like I told you before, uh, I think uh, aromatherapy has so many benefits and especially for my audience, which are athletes. So just to begin with, what's aromatherapy? Yeah. So... For those that don't know, I feel like it's becoming a lot more mainstream and popular now, but not everybody knows or maybe is familiar with it. But aromatherapy is really just this complementary health approach where we practice using natural oils that are extracted from plants, different parts of the plants, and use them just to enhance psychological and just physical well-being. All right, perfect. <laughs> Um, and, and usually do you use with some other types of aroma, uh, or other, other therapies, or, uh, do you usually focus more on only aromatherapy? So I feel like aromatherapy in general is like a holistic health modality. So anything that is just balancing all over homeostasis within the body. So it is very complementary to a lot of other like natural holistic health uh, approaches. So it goes, you know, hand in hand with like massage. You see like essential oils and massage used together a lot. You see, you know, aromatherapy and music therapy tied together a lot. Um, Reiki, reflexology, um, you know, it's very common in chiropractor offices and with acupuncture. So it goes hand in hand with a lot of different modalities. Obviously it's really beneficial by itself as well. Like you don't need to always, you know, tie in massage with aromatherapy you can use them at home without all those extra things <laughs> as yeah. well um but yeah it's just amazing you know you're using these volatile aromatic compounds from plants that you know they play a role in the plant they protect the plant you know from pesticides and predators but they also attract pollinators and they really just strengthen the plant but they can also do that for our own body which is just so amazing we can use those chemical components that are also found in essential oils to help strengthen our mind and our body which is such a gift from nature yeah yeah it, it is incredible to me how it has an essential oil for everything we need. Every problem we ha we go through, we can probably really? find an essential oil. Um, there really and, is. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. I, I talk to my mom and every day, and then I say, oh, this this is happening. And then she's, oh, use lavender or use yes. tree or something like that. It's Our conversation is always based on which essential yes. oils I'm, I should use. And they're so helpful. I mean, your mom's like, how amazing that your mom is also a aromatherapist and just knows about the powers and just good growing up with that. You know, I have three little kids and we use them even this morning, a prime example, my daughter was nervous about going to school for something that was going on. And she said, mom, can we get my necklace and put a drop of bergamot on that? And like, I wish I would have had that as a kid to be like, okay, I'm nervous throughout my day. I can literally just stop and just smell my necklace and know that it's like calming me down. And then I am like safe and I'm okay. And I can be positive. And just to get through those simple moments and just every single day that we all experience. Yes, yes, that's that's awesome, and I'm I'm so glad that I have my mom with me, and I've learned so much uh, in a young age, and I have a little cousin that she's the same way. Um, so yeah, um, but then um, to just to keep going with the topic, uh, what are some what are the benefits um, in aromatherapy for athletes? For athletes, I love this topic so much because, you know, everyone can benefit from essential oils, but especially athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I grew up playing sports. Sports was like a major part of my life. And like, looking back now, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have had essential oils back then for so many different reasons. Obviously I still love to exercise and I use essential oils to help me in so many ways, but I'm not like competitive. And I think they really could have helped me in so many ways. So one is like sleep. Sleep is a huge one. You know, as athletes, 
like they should be getting more sleep than the average person <laughs> due to just like muscle recovery and just all the pressure and emotions that come with just being an athlete. Um, I think like they say, you know, the average person should get seven to nine hours of sleep a night, but an athlete should be getting at least nine hours of sleep at night. And that's, it's really hard, like, especially as an athlete, because, you know, you're busy and you're out of your routine and maybe you're sleeping at different places or practicing at different times. And it's hard to like quiet the mind and also quiet the body. So aromatherapy is awesome for just doing both of those things, just kind of helping us unwind at the end of the day to promote restful sleep. And there's been several studies that have shown just how helpful essential oils are for that. Um, another one is just stress. Athletes, they carry a lot on their shoulders <laughs> and maybe it's not just like that physical stress, but also just the emotional and mental stress. I know you talk about this a lot with your podcast about, you know, mindset, um, anxiety, there's a lot of pressure and even just trying to find that balance between, you know, training and family and work and life and school and all these different things. Um, and sometimes we can just get in this negative, like spiral of emotions and just, Oh, are we good enough? Are we not like, what can we do better? How can we improve? And, um, it can be really helpful for just kind of like snapping us out of those and just helping us cope better with stress and anxiety. Um, another example is just physical, like muscle pain and just recovery, um, you know, kind of tying in with stress, you know, when the mind is relaxed, the body can re then relax. And, if we are using aromatherapy to benefit our mind and when we're feeling stressed, our body then can heal the best, right? Like our body doesn't heal when it's, when we're feeling emotional stress or even physical stress, like the body only heals in the parasympathetic state, meaning rest and digest. So along that kind of goes with sleep too, but even so it can, you know, essential oils can be great for just eating and just pain relief providing, you know, that cooling sensation to the skin. If we're applying them topically to the skin, a lot of essential oils have anti-inflammatory properties. Um, it's, they're amazing. This is why that they're found in like so many over the counter, uh, medications you find, you know, Bengay and menthol, like those are constituents also found in essential oils. Um, so they can reduce inflammation. They can also relieve headaches. I feel like athletes sometimes struggle with headaches more than the average person. Um, I don't know if there's actually data to show that, but <laughs> I think just related to stress and the, you know, being out of the routine and maybe not sleeping as much, and then also being like dehydrated, um, can all contribute to headaches. So essential oils can just help alleviate headaches. They can also, um, just enhance focus and just boost energy. Um, there's been some really cool studies too. Like I I'm a big researcher, I'm a big nerd. <laughs> so like, I love to see the science and like data behind things, but um, there was one study published in the Journal of Sport and Exercise Psychology that actually measured performance. And they had um, participants just smell peppermint oil, and they noticed that they were able to do one more push up than they usually could before they collapsed. And they also were able to cut off two seconds off their normal quarter mile um, dash pace. Um, than usual. And researchers think that that has something to do with just the peppermint improving their motivation. You know, we know essential oils work really closely with our limbic system, which is in charge of just um, our stress response, our emotions, but also our behaviors and motivations. Um, there's another study that had athlete, college athletes actually smell different aromas on a treadmill. And they found that when they smelled peppermint, they were less fatigued. They had less frustration. They felt that they actually performed better. I know for me, like I roll on a little peppermint oil <laughs> behind my ears before I go for a run almost every single day. And it just, not only does it like give me a little boost of energy um, and provide that like cooling effect as I start sweating, um, but it's also really helpful to just like open up the airways and help me just breathe a little easier. Um so many other ways. I mean, essential oils can be helpful for digestion for athletes. I feel like um, sometimes athletes will struggle with just <laughs> digestion in general. Maybe it's just, you know, being out of the routine, but also, um, you know, that physical stress on the body produces, you know, prostaglandins, which can be cause inflammation and cause changes in bowels and all of that. So um, they can be really supportive for that as well. So those are kind of like the main areas I feel like 
essential oils could help so many ways right <laughs> yes for sure and and for the people listening to us i can i can tell them that it's all all truth because i i use them every time every day uh i never used the peppermint like that before but i i'm gonna try it tonight when i go for a run yeah. um but yeah I, I like the i like the research um behind it as well because a lot of people don't believe it. some people need that mm -hmm. that research to to kind of believe but yes. i'm all down to try as well new things yes my mom always told me to do it and and sometimes like uh I didn't really believe her, you know, but then I started trying and then things started working out, you know, lavender to, to sleep, for example, it's one that like uh, nowadays I can, I almost cannot sleep without lavender anymore because I just yes. dropped uh, some in my pillow and then I sleep yes. like, oh, you know, yes, such, you notice the days that you use it and the days that you don't for sure. Yeah, for Even sure. with peppermint, like if I'm just like, oh, like I know you know, you're going to feel great if you go for the run, but it's so hard to just put your feet in the shoes and to go <laughs> like the first step is so it's like the hardest of all of them. After like a couple of minutes, you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. But that first step, and I feel like when I apply a little peppermint, it just wakes me up. It gives me that little boost of energy. Like, I don't want to like lay on the couch or do something else anymore. Like I want to like get going. And I, I just notice that the days that I use it, um, I'm just much more motivated to just get out there and get it done. It's amazing. Yes, definitely try the peppermint trick. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so going going uh, a little deeper in that, right? So we, we talk about how that can help athletes and then we'll come to the essential oils essentially. Um, so first of all, before we go to which essential oils are the the, the, bad, the, good, the good ones for your athletes, um, what are essential oils? Where do they come from? Are they natural? Are they not natural? Yeah, that's a great question because I think there's a lot of confusion, especially because essential oils are not marked, like they're not um, regulated. So mm -hmm. if you go to the grocery store, you will see essential oils everywhere and fragrances everywhere. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they are pure. So as an aromatherapist, we only want to use pure essential oils, that there is nothing else added to them, that there is no synthetic components at all, um, because those have the biggest benefit for the body. So we always want to make sure like when you're looking and shopping for essential oils, that they do not say, you know, fragrance on the bottle. And um, there, you always want to make sure it has like a plant species name on the bottle and nothing else. It should only say the essential oil. So if you're getting lavender, it should only say, lavendula and gustafolia or whatever species it is it shouldn't say you know something else added to it right um so essential oils they are basically just these aromatic compounds that are found in you know seeds bark flowers roots um, and other parts of the plant and they are extracted from the plant through steam distillation or expressing them. Um, they're actually 50 to 70 times more potent than the plant themselves. So that's something to really keep in mind is that like a little bit goes a long ways, which is why, you know, sometimes people see those little bonds they're like, oh, they're so expensive. But oh, yeah, really? there's like 250 pounds, you know, of that plant in that little bottle, which also is good because we don't need very much. Like one drop can be plenty. Like you don't need to put... 18 drops on your pillow to go to bed, like you can put one little drop and it makes a huge difference. As long as we can smell them, even just smelling them directly from the bottle can be really helpful. And you're not even using really any of the essential oil. So they're just really incredibly powerful and potent. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then, so you, you mentioned a little bit, how, how, how is the process, right? And I, I don't want to go, um, yeah, of the topic but there's a movie that i watch with my mom uh, i think it's the perfumist I, I, if i'm not oh. mistaken the the guy um he's just crazy about his smell you know and then mm -hmm. um he see these these people these girls that he likes and then i mean it sounds a little creepy but it's it's actually a good story so he used um the same thing that the same like a uh, type of uh, machine that they use to do essential oils, he used that to get the people, the smell of the people that he wants, you know, so mm. he would end up killing the people that he that he loved, that he liked it, he, he would put their body there, and then he would extract the smell of them. It's oh. kind of creepy, but it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is weird. But I mean, <laughs> 
But when I was asking my mom about it, how how are essential oils made? Like, how is that possible? How that plant can be can have the the, the essential oil coming from? And then um, and then she showed me the movie. I'm like, okay, now I got it. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. It, it, yeah. yeah, it is a little creepy, but it, it gets the <laughs> idea. Um, so now we know what essential oils are, and then we talk about uh, how that can help athletes. Um, so what are some essential oils that we can use um, if we are having trouble with sleeping, for example? Okay, so so many essential oils. I mean, there's over 150 different <laughs> essential oils. So I'm trying to, I'm going to narrow it down to probably like my top five-ish if you're like new to essential oils and you are an athlete and want to kind of like get started. So peppermint, I know I kind of talked about that one a little bit already because I feel like it's just such a great essential oil. Um, you know, peppermint contains this constituent called menthol, which has a cooling effect when it's applied to the skin. So peppermint can be so great for head tension, you know, putting a little bit, um, like on our temples or the back of our neck. Um, while I'm saying applying to the skin, I also want to just reiterate too, for those that are new to essential oils to always mix them with like a carrier oil when you're applying them because they are extremely potent. So, um, like you could put one drop of peppermint in with like a little bit, maybe a half a tablespoon of like like olive oil or coconut oil or something to just kind of help dilute it. Um, a lot of people will make like essential oil rollers so they have it handy to use. Um, but yeah, you could use peppermint on your neck or your legs if they're sore. Um, you can also use it for focus. You can use it for, you know, upset stomach or if you're feeling a little like motion sickness or nausea. Um, so peppermint's a big one. Lavender is also probably one of the most popular ones in the world. And rightfully so, because it's like the Swiss army knife of essential oils. It does so many things. It's great for the skin. It's great for like stress. It's great for just like sleep, you know, adding a drop to your pillow. Um, you can get an essential oil diffuser and diffuse it at nighttime. Um, you can add some to with Epsom salts to your bath to kind of help you relax both your muscles and your mind. Um, if you don't like the scent of lavender, you know, some people don't like the scent of, you know, like floral or lavender. Um, I really love black spruce. I love like tree oils. A lot of people, you know, associate that aroma with like Christmas time and being in the woods, which is calming. So black spruce is a great substitute. Um, it's also really great for just tension as well. Um, another oil I really love is copaiba which um, not a lot of people are familiar with, but um, it works similar to like CBD in a way because they both work on the same receptors. So it's kind of nicknamed like the firefighter of essential oils, meaning like it puts out fires in the body. So it can be really great for um, any like recovery tension again. It's a huge oil for athletes, just if you're experiencing like any pain or tension. Um, Eucalyptus is another really great one, you know, like especially during allergy season or sick season, um, just helps really open up the airways, you know, adding a drop to the shower floor while you take a shower just to kind of get the humidity, but also just breathe in that fresh aroma. Um, it's also great for tension as well. All of these work great for tension, um, but eucalyptus, especially if you're like biting a cold or allergies, anything related to that. Sometimes I even love eucalyptus before I'm like taking a run just because it kind of like helps me just like breathe a little easier. Um, another one would be like tea tree is another helpful essential oil um, for athletes, just because if we're experiencing in like, I feel like athletes experience a lot of like skin related things. <laughs> if, if it's like athlete's foot or um, even like acne, just because we're producing more sebum and that oil production, just because we're sweating a lot more. So um, tea tree is really great for just um, helping clear up blemishes. It's great for just um, supporting athlete's foot, probably the best oil for that. Um, other oils, I would say like lemon and orange, um, either one of those are my top just because they're a great, like mood lifter and they just promote like feelings of positivity. They're known as like sunshine in a bottle. So, um, just promoting like happiness. They can help us like when we're in a funk, you know, and not maybe like feeling our best. Um, they also work great just to like deodorize, like any like stinky, you know, sweaty clothes <laughs> or gym bag. Um, adding a drop to a cotton ball and putting them in a gym bag works amazing. So those are probably like my top five. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, and how you mentioned a little bit how we should use them, 
but is, is there any issues on in using directly to our skin uh, or maybe drinking them or I don't know, any other ways that we should be careful? That's a great question. So safety is super important to me, obviously, as an aromatherapist. So, um, I mean, some people will apply them directly to their skin and they will do totally fine. Um, they have, you know, tough skin, they're not sensitive, but other people will apply them and get like a crazy reaction. So I think to prevent any adverse reactions, we always want to dilute them. So like I said, just adding with a little bit of carrier oil. The other thing to keep in mind, like I mentioned lemon. So lemon is considered like a photosensitive essential oil. So if you're applying lemon to your skin, when you go out then into the sun, say maybe you go for like you're playing volleyball on a beach somewhere, you can potentially get a photosensitive reaction, meaning it can cause you know, the skin to become red, burn, irritation, things like that. Similar to like, like a lot of people refer to them as margarita hands. Like if you're making a margarita on the beach and you're squeezing the limes, like your, your hands can get a huge rash because of the sun. So it's very it's similar to that. So a lot of the citrus oils, we want to be really careful of just applying them to the skin and then going out into the sun. Um, as far as ingestion, you know, people that add essential oils to their water, um, or just take them in capsules. That's something that I think for a beginner, they should be very cautious of. I mean, essential oils are great to support various needs of the body, but um, if they're interested in ingesting them and, you know, taking them, I would always just recommend someone talk to a certified aromatherapist first, just because, you know, that sometimes there can be interactions with medications and things like that. And you want to do it in a safe way, but for the most part, for people to get the most benefits of utilizing essential oils, just smelling them, inhalation and um, topical use applying to the skin are probably the most helpful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I love that. That's, that's a lot of good information. Um, so, so the reason, the reason I decided to, to bring you and talk about different, you know, different topics is because, um, there's a tennis player, actually, his name is Novak Djokovic. And then he, <laughs> he talks about, um, the, the top hundred tennis players, how, um, the difference between them, it's usually not technical skills, you know, it's probably it's, mm. sometimes their mindset, things that they do off the court, you know, and, and I feel like aromatherapy, it's one of them, you know, it's this it's small details that they will make a difference at, at the end. Um, and then, you know, people that are listening to us, they want to improve their performance, they want to become not only better people, but also better athletes at the end of the day. Um, so, that that brings me to my to my next question. It's a question that I always ask my uh, my guest speakers because we talk about performance, but we also talk about greatness and success. So my my question for you is how you define success. Oh gosh, this is not this is a of all the questions you ask, this is probably the hardest. <laughs> I think it's so subjective for everyone. Um, yeah. you know, I really, for me personally, I think of success as really like the peace of mind at the end of the day, knowing that I did my best, mm -hmm. like there is no better feeling at the end of the day being like, okay, like today was a good day. I did my best. But I also think success is really like that, like that gut feeling that like tingle of excitement, like that flame within your soul of knowing that you're on like a path to becoming a better person. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, when you get pulled in a certain direction to do something like that feels so good inside. So I feel like those two combine, like knowing you did your best, but also knowing that you're on the path to becoming a better person, like that is success. Like to me, that's success. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because I, looking at your story, like, uh, um, so the school that I go to, we have a lot of nurses here, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I talk about aromatherapy and they don't know anything about it. And I feel yeah. like, uh, what you just mentioned is basically what you what you did you know it's kind of like uh, went out there and tried to learn new things so mm -hmm. how, how did you how did you um got familiar with um aromatherapy because you became a nurse um mm. and, and we know that not necessarily after you become a nurse you know anything about aromatherapy right yeah how, how did you get familiar with that 
Yeah. So in nursing school, we didn't learn really about aromatherapy at all. Like we knew about it as like a complementary health approach, but that's all we learned. That was like that one sentence that we learned. When I worked um, in the hospital, we did use aromatherapy. That was probably my first introduction to it in my hospital. I know not every hospital uses it. Actually, it's becoming more, more used and more common as like every year, I feel like there's more. Um, but we only used two oils. We used peppermint and we used lavender. And to be honest, there was no training for the nurses on how to even really use those oils. Like we just knew that we had them in case the patients asked, but the patients never asked because they didn't even, (laughs) they didn't know how to use that. So, but I feel like, you know, when you look back on your life and you see like these little like stones put on this path leading to a certain direction, like, I feel like it always kind of like sparked my interest. Um, when I had kids though, that's really when I started to get into it more because I was stressed. I was stressed out mom, you know, and I wanted to find ways to be more intentional about my self-care. And I also wanted to be able to help my kids. And when kids are younger and they're not feeling their best, there's not a lot like we can give them or do. And as a nurse, I always wanted to like give, you know, we're always um, wanting to give medicines and we're always, we just want to make people feel better, but there's not really a lot that you can do before kids. Like when they're not feeling their best, besides giving them a back rub or putting them in the bath or just tiny things. So I knew like if they were congested, I'm like, I know eucalyptus can help. And I know when they're struggling with sleep, lavender can help. So I think that's kind of what like catapulted it all. And then I just started to really like, I'm a big science person. So I'm like, show me the science. Why is this actually helping my kids? So then I really dove deep into like, you know, there's 30,000 research articles on essential oils. And that's when I started learning about the science. And um, that's kind of, I was like, there needs to be more out there about the science of essential oils. So that's kind of where I just started like sharing what I was reading and the new research. And it kind of led to all of this, you know, me um, studying aromatherapy practices in hospitals and writing books. And, <laughs> and here I am. So it's kind of cool, like how, you know, you pivot and change. So I feel like I'm tying in my, you know, Western medicine background with also just this complementary health approach, which, you know, I think they go best together always. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And yes, I don't think we can live without one or the other. And I think they, it's mm-hmm. just like you said, they just, match so good that we should never avoid one or the other um well thank you so much um and do you have any podcasts any books besides yours i know you talk about about yours as well uh that you would recommend people that are listening to us oh gosh um you know, I listen to a wide range of podcasts. None of them are really specifically for like <laughs> athletes. Okay. Um, but, you know, as far as books, you know, I mean, the best aromatherapy book <laughs> is my own that's out there, I would say. I mean, as po- podcasts, I mean, I love Huberman Labs because I like a lot of science related things. I love learning about sleep and like their circadian rhythm um wellness mama is a great one she kind of ties in a lot of like holistic um research into hers Mm -hmm. um I'm trying to think of any really great books that I've read lately I can't really think of any specifically on just like a wide range of like holistic Mm -hmm. aromatherapy or anything like that it's okay it's okay (laughs) I I saw saw that you did you post the other day um, and I, I, took, I actually took a screenshot because I wanted to, to look at up those books, but I, I, yeah. I don't remember the names either, but that's, yeah. that's okay. But I'll, I'll definitely check it out the podcast. Cause I feel like in terms of the science and there's almost everything we can relate it to sports. Uh, and especially mm-hmm. for me, like I, I see something, I don't know, totally random. And I'm like, Oh, I think that I can use that on the athletic totally. school, you know? And most of the time it's yes. like, yeah, I can. So, yes, absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much. I think uh, it was great to learn more about aromatherapy. I, I knew a little bit about it, but again, I, I keep learning more and more and, and, and I love it. Um, I'll definitely take the, the peppermint before I run a little bit. Yes, let Just, me know how it goes. <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for finding the time and, and sharing some knowledge. I really appreciate that. Thanks for having me. This is really fun. Awesome.